questions. <laughs> so how do I answer back? <laughs> <laughs> How do I do that? Hindi pa upisa. Three minutes. Okay, it's six o'clock. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, and welcome to this um, webinar entitled Myths and Misconceptions about IVF. So, kung hindi nyo po naintindihan kung anong ibig sabihin ng IVF, uh, most probably this topic is too uh, advanced for you. So, I would like to recommend that you search our old videos uh, na entitled Miracle Baby, which I created, yung series po na to about infertility and uh, its treatment, which came out uh, early part of this um, quarantine. So every week po ako naglalabas ng mga videos noon during that time, uh, dahil may oras. <laughs> So, um, I tackled uh, more basic uh, problems such as how to get pregnant during the quarantine period. Uh, I explained what polycystic ovary syndrome is. I also explained how dysmenorrhea and infertility is related to endo uh, pelvic endometriosis. 
I also uh, tackled what makes a successful IUI. And lastly, yung tungkol po dun sa um, ovarian reserve. At meron pang isang bonus yon. Meron pang isang lecture uh, or video coming from our male infertility specialist, si Dr. Marlon uh, Martinez. So every week yon from the first week of April, I think, until May, um, dahil nag-GCQ na at uh, I thought that uh, the pandemic will soon be over kaya hininto ko na yung mga videos natin. But I realized na um, actually nakakatulong uh, yung mga ginawa kong videos kasi napanood nga ng maraming pasyente at hindi na ako nahirapan masyado sa pag -e explain sa kanila about their specific problems. So dahil August na po ngayon and so far wala pa tayong uh, light uh, at the end of the tunnel na nakikita, I realize na mas magandang ituloy yung uh, aking mga informative videos but this time in a more uh, engaging format. So live na po tayo ngayon. Ibig sabihin, you can post, no? you can type in your question so I can already see your greetings. Uh, hello sa inyong lahat um, At later on, I will try my best to answer yung mga questions po ninyo Sa abot ng aking makakaya Alright? So, let's get started Alright? So, kung hindi nyo po naintindihan kung ano ibig sabihin ng IVF uh, It means in vitro fertilization or test tube baby No? So, pagka pinanood nyo na yung mga previous videos, mas maintindihan nyo uh, ang content nitong um, webinar na ito. So, I am Dr. Eileen Kosi and I am a fertility doctor and the medical director of Kosi Fertility Clinic and IVF Center here in Angeles City. So, I decided to create another uh, series on myths and misconceptions about IVF and the reason is because kahit na um, yung first IVF baby was born about 42 years ago si Louise Brown and uh, we have already about 1 million IVF babies born uh, in the entire uh, globe uh, marami pa rin po tayong hindi masyadong naintindihan Kahit na yung mga pasyente nag-undergo na ng IVF, I don't think they fully understood no? kung ano yung nangyari sa kanila dahil napakabilis ng mga pangyayari. So, ang gusto kong uh, itakal ngayon is yung number one myth na hindi naintindihan ng most uh, patients. At usually, ito yung reason kung bakit natatakot sila na even to go to an infertility specialist or to even ask about IVF kasi ang alam nga nila, pagkakaalam nila is napakamahal ng IVF or in vitro fertilization. And it is only for the rich ika nga. Uh, so, ito yung myth na ibabas natin. So, I'm saying this is definitely not true at all. Because with the 15 years that I have been practicing IVF, although meron talagang medyo may kaya, no? or uh, yeah, uh, who can afford uh, doing IVF without any problem, any qualms, most of the patients na nakikita ko are ordinary or average individuals lang na nakakapag-ipon naman eventually uh, so that they are able to undergo uh, IVF after a few months of saving up. No? So I have seen the most uh, common na professions na I encounter ko are mga teachers, mga policemen, mga military personnel, mga seafarers, nurses, no? uh, mga call center agents, and also yung mga small business owners. So at the towards the end of this uh, talk, I will be sharing to you uh, two uh, couples whom we treated for uh, infertility, underwent IVF in our center, at hindi po sila mga uh, rich and famous. Okay? So, baka famous, but not rich. <laughs> so, just like what I do to all the couples who come to the 
clinic and asking about IVF, uh, I usually do not blurt out right away. So, hindi ko agad sinasabi kung magkano nga ang gagastusin sa IVF uh, kasi baka matakot sila at hindi na sila babalik. <laughs> But usually, pagka na-explain ko na kung what IVF entails and they understand kung bakit siya ganito, naintindihan na nila kung bakit uh, ganito siya ang presyo niya, kung bakit siya ganito kamahal, at kung papaano pwedeng ma-modify yung treatment nila according to their budget. At kung ano yung pwede nilang uh, gawin para makatulong na makatipid dun sa gastusin uh, during in vitro fertilization. So as you can see on this slide, uh, IVF is made up of several steps. So hindi siya madaling gawin. And each and every step along the way is as important as the previous one or the next one. At pagka merong nagkamali na isa sa mga step na to, of course, it can... Uh, um, mean the difference between uh, success and failure. So, para lang uh, sa general uh, idea natin kung paano ginagawa ang IVF, as you can see here, we start with stimulating the ovaries. So, big sabihin, we give the uh, woman uh, injectable medications dahil ang purpose natin is for her to produce many eggs in just one cycle. No? So, ang pagkakaalam natin, every month, isang itlog lang ang lumalabas sa ating ovaries. But it's actually possible uh, with the use of uh, injectable medications na makaharvest tayo ng mga sampung itlog in just one cycle. So, hindi naman mahirap gawin yan. Tuturuan natin kayo kung paano mag-inject sa bahay. No? Um, ang idea is to produce around 8 to 15 eggs dahil pagka less than 8, usually it's associated with lower success rate while if it is more than 15, it's associated with more complications. All right. So, ang next step is to harvest the egg. Uh, this is also known as um, oocyte retrieval or ovum pickup. So, lahat yung tatlong uh, terms na yon mean the same thing. After harvesting the egg, these eggs will be fertilized with your husband's sperm. And then they will be cultured in the laboratory for about 3 to 5 days. And then, pagka culture ng mga embryos na to, usually about 2 of them, uh, one or two of them will be transferred into the uterus of the woman while yung excess embryos will be frozen. And then, you will be given medication ng mga pampakapet while we are waiting no, for the uh, dreaded pregnancy test 14 days after the embryo transfer. So, dito sa picture na to, although nakita natin, dere-derecho siya, actually, uh, it's really possible to cut it uh, somewhere here. So, pwede siyang uh, hindi matuloy yung embryo transfer and we can freeze all the embryos after culturing them in the laboratory. And uh, I want to emphasize no, that there is not just one way of doing IVF. Kahit na tanongin nyo yung iba-ibang doctor, mga fertility doctors, uh, each one of them will have a different style of treating their patients. Or kahit na ako mismo, if I do an IVF cycle on one patient this month, and if it's not successful, we have to repeat it after a few months, babaguhin ko rin kung ano yung nakita ko na pwedeng mag-improve for her uh, next cycle. So, ang mga medications na binibigay natin sa mga nagpapa-IVF will make up already about uh, 40% of the cost. 40? Yeah. It's about 40% of the cost already. Kaya kung pwedeng magtipid, gagawin natin. So, we give stimulation drugs. Ang purpose niyan is para lumaki yung mga follicles. Uh, yung suppression drugs is what we use para hindi mag-rupture yung mga follicles because 
Uh, as you well know, kailangan mag-rupture yung follicles para ma-release yung egg. Pero with IVF, we want to prevent that from happening. Kailangan hindi sila mag-rupture kasi nga, iha-harvest natin sila. We also give a trigger shot. Ang trigger shot is also an injectable medication that is given 36 hours prior to the harvest. So, ito yung pinaka-importante sa lahat ng mga injection kasi ito yung nag-institute ng final oocyte maturation, yung pag-mature ng mga eggs na laman ng mga follicles natin. And yung luteal support or in other words, in Tagalog, mga pampakapit. So, this will make up already a third or uh, yeah, 30-40% of the cost. So, another contributor, uh, contributory factor sa gastos ng IVF is yung mga hormonal test. Pero this is a necessary evil. No? So, ang dami mo na ngang ini-inject na gamot, tapos kukuhanan ka pa ng dugo every so often during your IVF cycle. Pero importante kasi ito. So, like itong hormonal panel na to, FSH, LH, TSH, prolactin, and estradiol, that's important to find out kung ano yung magiging starting dose ng medication na ibibigay sa'yo pagka nag-start na yung menstruation mo. Of course, if you have hypothyroidism or a hyperprolactinemia, we want to treat that. Uh, dahil merong mga complications yan if you get pregnant with hypothyroidism, for example. And you're not going to ovulate if you are hyperprolactinemic. Pero madali lang naman pong gamutin yan with oral medications. We also uh, institute serial estradiol monitoring. Ito yung paulit-ulit na chinecheck sa dugo ng pasyente na nag inject ng mga stimulatory uh, drugs Dahil, uh, we want to make sure na nagre-respond siya to the medication. We also request for a serum AMH early on because this will help us decide or help us prognosticate or see, look forward kung ilan yung mga itlog na pwedeng ma-harvest in one cycle. So, alam natin na kung medyo mababa na yung serum AMH, probably I'll need to give you a higher dose of medication. At syempre, ma-advise na rin kita kung hindi masyadong optimistic yung magiging result ng ating stimulation. No? So, yung serum progesterone is also requested during the stimulation in order to decide whether we're going to proceed with a fresh transfer or we're going to freeze all of your embryos and then transfer them during a natural cycle. And of course, yung serum beta-HCG, yan po yung blood test, quantitative blood test for um, pregnancy. Alright. So, ito... Uh, is what we call follicle monitoring is when we do serial ultrasound. So we want to see you on the first or second day of your, your menstruation and we will count the number of small follicles in each of your ovaries. So as you can see here, this is one ovary at itong mga maliliit na bilog-bilog na to, ibilangin natin yan during menstruation. Yan ang mga antral follicles at yan ang mga follicles na merong potential na mag-grow at pwedeng ma-harvest ang itlog niyan during that cycle. So, paulit-ulit ang ultrasound because we want to make sure na lumalaki yung mga follicles na to. Kasi kung hindi, you might be labeled as a poor responder at ibig sabihin nun, we have to give you a higher dose of your medication. Ayaw din na naman natin na ba sobrang dami yung itlog because of the possible complication of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome or OHSS which is actually a life-threatening condition. So we want to make sure na sa monitoring natin, tama-tama lang ang number ng uh, follicles that are growing, hindi masyadong konte at hindi rin naman masyadong marami. Aside from the number of follicles and the size of the follicles na nagde-develop, we also monitor yung thickness ng lining ng endometrium. So we want to start from a thin endometrium when we start in the injectable medications and then dapat unti-unting kumakapal ito habang tumatagal. So, usually, we will just uh, spend about 10 to 12 days na nag inject ng uh, 
uh, gamot and by the end of stimulation dapat yung lining ng matres should look like this it's a trilaminar endometrium at yung thickness niya should be at least 8 millimeters up to a maximum of 1.4 millimeters ibig sabihin maganda yung chance na kakapit yung embryo na ilalagay natin dito dahil hindi siya manipis no? And then comes the oocyte retrieval. So, ang oocyte retrieval is done under ultrasound guidance. So, as you can see here, ito ang ultrasound probe. Meron siyang kasama na needle na mahaba, pero manipis na manipis lang yan. No? So, it's connected to a tubing. Tapos, nasa dulo ng tubing na yon is the test tube. So, we use this needle to puncture or aspirate each and every follicle para makuha yung itlog na content niya. So, we use a special suction machine. It's a very special, uh, very soft lang na suction machine para mahigop yung itlog at saka yung folic uh, follicular fluid na uh, galing dun sa follicles papunta dito sa test tube. So, nakikita itong needle by ultrasound as you can see here in this picture. So, it is done under anesthesia. So, huwag kayong matakot um, dahil patutulugin naman natin po kayo. So, ang type of anesthesia that we use is what we call uh, IV general anesthesia. So, propofol ang binibigay natin sa inyo para agad-agad ka rin magigising after the procedure. So, no need to worry about the pain kasi... Uh, yung ating mga anesthesiologist ang bahala dyan. No? So, as you can see here, nakikita yung needle sa ultrasound habang ginagawa natin yung procedure. So, habang uh, sinasuction natin yung follicle at kinukuha yung follicular fluid through this uh, needle, ang nurse naman po natin ay kinokolekta yan sa mga test tubes. So, she makes sure that the temperature is um, correct para hindi ma-damage yung eggs na na-aspirate galing sa uh, inyong mga ovaries. Tapos, she passes that test tube to the embryologist who will be waiting in the other room. So, eto na yung follicular fluid at chinecheck na ng ating embryologist kung may makikita siyang itlog dun sa fluid na yon, no? And then, lilinisin niya yan, and then, isa-separate na niya from the follicular fluid. Um, <clears throat> so, habang grogi pa kayo, syempre, we will transfer you first to our recovery room. At dito tayo maghihintay hanggang ikaw ay gising na gising na at pwede nang tumayo at umuwi. But before you leave, actually, I will be able to tell you, the doctor will be able to tell you kung ilan na yung itlog na kuha natin. Pero hindi pa natin alam kung ilan yung embryos. No? So during the time na nasa recovery room, recovery room, si wife, si husband naman will be spending time in our sperm collection room. So, dito magko-collect si husband ng similia which will be used later on for uh, IVF and XC. So, kung wala naman si husband dahil siya ay isang OFW at uh, umalis na siya, um, sumakay na ng barko at hindi na natin siya uh, hihintayin pang bumalik sa next na vacation niya, pwede tayo actually mag-iwan ng frozen sperm. So, ibig sabihin, uh, habang nandito si husband, magko-collect siya ng sperm, if he freeze yon and then ilalabas yon during the day na mag harvest na si wife ng kanyang mga eggs. At yon ang gagamitin ng ating embryologist for intracytoplasmic sperm injection or in other words, uh, in short, XC. No? Ibig sabihin, huhulihin uh, ng embryologist ang isang sperm using this very very tiny injecting needle so nandito na sa needle na to yung sperm at kasalukuyang ini-inject niya dito sa cytoplasm ng isang itlog so we know this is a mature egg kasi meron siyang single na polar body 
So, it is being held in place by this holding pipette. No? So, imagine kung gaano kahirap gawin ito. Kasi ginagawa siya under the inverted microscope. So, gumagalaw-galaw, nagsiswimming yung mga sperm. And of course, hindi niya kukunin yung sperm na hindi gumagalaw kasi hindi healthy yon. So, hahabulin niya kung ano yung pinaka-healthy, ikakat yung tail para ma-immobilize yung sperm. And then, ya yeah, aspirate yung isang sperm dito sa needle. And while it's still there, it's going to be injected into the cytoplasm of this egg. At pagkatapos niya ma-inject ang bawat isang egg with a sperm, they will be cultured dito sa ating mga incubators. At dyan sila magsistay for about 3 to 5 days. So as you can see here, ito ang itsura ng isang fertilized egg on day 1. Uh, nakikita dito yung tinatawag na pronuclei. So we have two pronuclei, one coming from the male and then the other one coming from the female. Kaya pag chinek ng ating embryologist on the next day at nakita niya to, he will of course uh, declare that this uh, is a fertilized egg. And then, ikukulture pa rin yan for several days. Usually, hindi tinitingnan ang embryos during the second day, but it should look like this. No? It's a four-cell embryo with four very even blastomeres. And then, on day three, it's going to be an eight-cell. Eight-cell embryo na siya. So, pwedeng ma-freeze na kung marami tayong mga embryos or depende sa kagustuhan ng couple whether they want to try for a blastosis uh, stage transfer or mas gusto na nilang mag-transfer during day 8 or even i-freeze na lang muna yung a few embryos on day 8 just to make sure, uh, sorry, day 3 at the 8 cell stage just to make sure na meron tayong ma-transfer na mga embryos in the future and then the rest will be cultured up to day 5. So, ang day 4 embryo is what we call a marula at ang day 5 embryo is what we call a blastocyst. No? So, merong uh, grading system ang blastocyst natin at uh, it's the role of our embryologist to report the grading of your embryos to the clinician and then of course, ang clinician ang magre-report sa pasyente. So, we can... Uh, decide on how many to transfer or how many to freeze. Uh, and then comes the day of your embryo transfer. No? So, ibig sabihin nito, babalik kayo on this day, this is done under transabdominal ultrasound. So, hindi kagaya ng usual visit nyo sa clinic na pinapaihi mo na kayo before kayo ma-ultrasound. Ito, instead, you are asked to drink water. Uh, slowly, mga around 2 to 3 glasses of water para mapuno ang pantog. No? Dahil ginagawa ang embryo transfer with ultrasound guidance. So, may ibang doctor or nurse na mag-ultrasound sa chan habang linalagay natin yung embryo sa loob ng matres. So, as you can see here, linoload ng embryologist yung isa o dalawang embryos dito sa catheter na manipis. And it is being inserted into the uterus, past the vagina and the cervix, into the uterine cavity, careful not to hit yung pinakatuktok uh, nung matres natin, no? uh, to make sure na hindi siya magko-contract. So, bakit dalawang embryos lang palang ilalagay natin? Eh, sabi mo kanina, sabi ko kanina, gusto natin, meron tayong mga 8 to 15 eggs. So, ang reason is because out of the 10 eggs, for example, uh, usually mga 60% lang ang magpa-fertilize. So, that's about 6 embryos. So, pagka linagay na natin yung dalawang embryos during the fresh cycle, meron ka pang excess na 4. So, yung 4 embryos na yon will be frozen muna. They will be frozen in liquid nitrogen. At kung sakaling hindi ka nabuntis during your first embryo transfer or nabuntis ka at nanganak ka na at gusto nyo pa ng second baby at meron ka pang mga frozen embryos, 
you have the opportunity of doing another embryo transfer in the future without having to go through the same procedure. So, ibig sabihin, wala na yung inject-inject na naman at saka harvest na naman ng mga itlog. Ito na lang ang uulitin natin hanggang maubos yung mga embryos natin. Okay? So, kaya, importante na intindihan natin ito dahil yung cost ng frozen embryo transfer, of course, will not be the same anymore as the cost of your fresh uh, transfer. So, yung mga excess embryos natin will be frozen in these tanks. So, ito yung mga liquid nitrogen tanks natin uh, sa center na kung saan nakastore ang inyong mga embryos. So, itong mga tanke na to, uh, hindi yan affected by electricity. Walang kuryente dyan. So, kahit na mag-brown out, hindi sila maapektuhan. As long as yung level ng liquid nitrogen is hindi siya nauubos. No? To make sure na pag linabas natin, thinaw out yung mga embryos, they are still healthy. So, meron po tayong iba-ibang strategies. No? So, yung inexplain ko sa inyo is what we call conventional IVF. Conventional meaning we give you injectable medications para in one cycle we are able to harvest many eggs. Pero meron pong mga pasyente na kahit na gano karaming gamot ang inject mo, hindi na siya makakapag-produce ng maraming itlog. Kaya sometimes we use these other two protocols. Yung tinatawag na minimal stimulation, uh, ibig sabihin, mas konti na lang na medication ang ibibigay. In fact, kung minsan, we combine it with just clomiphene citrate or letrozole. Pwede na kasi ang objective is just to harvest two or three eggs. Uh, pero meron din namang ibang uh, centers who uh, actually uh, specialize in what we call natural cycle IVF. Ibig sabihin, kahit na isang itlog lang, Ia harvest na and then yun din ang gagamitin na embryo para i-transfer. But it's important to note na of course yung success rate ng minimal stimulation or natural cycle IVF will not be as good as a conventional IVF. So with conventional IVF, kung nakaanim na embryos tayo and you are able to do embryo transfer three times, of course, mag increase yung success rate. Kung ang success rate ng isang embryo transfer is only about 30%, so kung nakadalawa o tatlo ka na embryo transfer, aakyat yun ng mga 50 to 60%. And you don't have to pay the same amount uh, dun sa frozen embryo transfer natin. So mamaya sasabihin ko kung magkano yung gastos doon. Ano? So kung nag-minimal stimulation ka or nag-natural cycle ka, probably you will still spend around 200 to 300,000 pesos. At kung hindi ka nabuntis dyan, uulit ka na naman. So meron din tinatawag na double stimulation. Ibig sabihin, for those patients na talagang uh, ubus na yung itlog, uh, gusto natin makarami pa rin by doing double stimulation. Ibig sabihin, we stimulate you during menstruation and then we harvest uh, mid-cycle and then a few days later, we stimulate again and harvest again. So ito, applicable siya dun sa mga pasyente na talagang may emergency na or nagmamadali na. Like those patients who are undergoing uh, treatment for cancer. No? So if you uh, meron kayong kilala or kayo mismo, yun nga, have a tendency nga na baka magkaroon ng uh, may lahi kayo ng breast cancer or meron kayong na-discover early on that you have early breast cancer and you want to preserve your eggs or your embryos, this is the way to go. Kasi in one cycle, makakadalawang harvest tayo. Yung segmental IVF naman po, ang ibig sabihin is china-chop-chop yung procedures ng IVF. So, yung inexplain ko sa inyo kanina is yung tuloy-tuloy. From stimulation until harvest, until embryo transfer, and then until the luteal support uh, plus the pregnancy test. Pero actually, pwede pong ikat yan sa gitna. Uh, pwedeng hindi matuloy yung embryo transfer. Kaya siya tinawag na segmental IVF. Pwedeng i-freeze na lang muna lahat ng mga embryos for whatever reason. Like kunwari, nakita natin manipis pala yung lining ng matres. Ayaw nating ituloy yung embryo transfer, okay lang. Kasi ang success rate 
ng frozen embryo transfer nowadays is just as good as the success rate of a fresh. In fact, sabi nila parang mas maganda pa ngayon. Ang success rate, pagka finrease mo muna yung embryos and then you waited for another natural cycle na iisa lang yung itlog so hindi supra-physiologic, hindi sobrang taas ng hormone level uh, ni wife kaya sometimes yun ang reason kung bakit ayaw mag-implant ng embryo kasi sobrang taas ng estradiol as well as the progesterone level. Kaya sabi nila, merong nag advocate ng freeze-all concept. Ibig sabihin, lahat na lang ng pasyente, isegmental IVF. Uh, because, yun nga, uh, pwedeng mag-increase yung success rate kung if you freeze mo muna yung embryos and then you wait for a natural cycle. Pero ibig sabihin nito, of course, dahil may extend yung treatment, medyo tataas ng konti yung gastos as compared to kung nagtuloy-tuloy from the harvest to the embryo transfer. So, malalaman naman po yan ng doktor ninyo kung if you are a good candidate for fresh or it's better to freeze all. So, one usual na indication for a freeze all concept is yung mga sobrang dami ng itlog. Yung tinatawag na ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Kasi dahil pag tinuloy ang embryo transfer at nabuntis ka nga during the fresh transfer, you are at a higher risk to have OHSS. No? And lastly, yung in vitro maturation is one way to save up on the number of uh, injectable medications that will be given to you but this is only applicable to those patients who have PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome. So, ibig sabihin, instead na 12 days or 10 days ka nag inject ng gamot, magiging 3 days lang. So, napakatipid niya. Yun nga lang, nakitaan ito ng lower success rate. So, ang success rate nito is some, something similar to just an IUI. So, nasa around 15-16% lang siya. So, but it is applicable for those patients na may PCOS to prevent uh, also hyperstimulation syndrome. No? So, ito pong machine na nakikita nyo ngayon is not uh, a robot. It's not Robocop. <laughs> so, it is just the inverted microscope with the attached micro manipulator. So, ito ang micro manipulator. Yan ang ginagamit ng ating embryologist na pang hold ng ating itlog at pang inject ng sperm dun sa egg. So, it is what is being used for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Yan din ang ginagamit pagka nag um, biopsy ng trophectoderm or yung uh, blastocyst, yung cells na nasa paligid ng isang blastocyst para i-biopsy, yan din ang ginagamit. Yan din ang ginagamit for assisted hatching. Ibig sabihin, naglalagay tayo ng butas dun sa zona pelucida o yung capsule ng itlog para matulungan ang blastocyst na mag-hatch or for it to have a higher chance of implantation. No? So, the other equipment, so lahat ito, mga basic equipments lang sa isang IVF center. Nothing special. So, ito ang ating laminar flow hood. It will make sure na hindi makokontaminate yung mga sperm and egg at saka embryos na hinahandle ng ating embryologist. This is the incubator. Itong dalawang to, incubator sila. Diyan, inaalagaan ng embryologist ang ating mga embryos. And then, this one is your stereo microscope. Siya. Yan ang ginagamit pang load ng embryo into the uh, ET catheter. At dyan din, chinecheck yung presence ng mga itlog pagka na-aspirate na siya from your follicles. But all of these equipments are only as good as the people who are using them. No? Uh, importante yung mga tao, they are well-trained. So, ang isang embryologist po na senior, ibig sabihin at least 5 years na siya na nagpa-practice ng embryology. So, in the Philippines, wala naman pong kurso ng embryology. That's why usually ang isang embryologist is a graduate of any 4-year science course, medtech, o kaya biology, microbiology, at nag-undergo uh, ng on-the-job training na at least 5 years. 
So, importante na meron tayong at least two embryologists in every center para magkaroon ng double checking or yung tinatawag na witnessing. No? So, every time na nag-handle ng embryos, eggs, and sperm, ang isang embryologist merong another embryologist na nag-check sa ginagawa niya to prevent yung mga human errors. No? Kaya yung mga nababalitaan nyo na mga mishaps uh, sa mga IVF centers uh, yeah, previously, na merong pasyente or uh, mother na Caucasian pero nanganak siya ng black na baby this is because nagkaroon ng swapping ng embryos during um, the work of the embryologist so in order to prevent that merong double manual witnessing uh, and everything is has to happen inside a clean room so from the word implies Ang clean room is a room that is very, very clean. So, yung air dito, uh, ang number of particles dun sa air should be to its uh, lowest. No? So, merong uh, grading system yan. So, ang grade or classification system ng isang IVF clean room should be at least an ISO 7. So, binibilang yung number ng dust particles na nasa hangin ng isang clean room. And in order to maintain the cleanliness of the air in a clean room, meron tayong mga HEPA filters na gumagana uh, every time na meron tayong procedure sa ating laboratory. So the air coming from outside is being filtered to eliminate the dust and the inside air is recirculated. Sabi nga nung isang uh, narinig ko na speaker, ang... Clean room should be so clean that you should be able to eat from the floor. So, pwede daw pagkainan yung sahig ng clean room. Ganun siya dapat kalinis. At sabi ko nga sa ating mga staff, uh, pagka buong mundo nagkaroon na ng COVID-19, alam na natin kung saan tayo magtatago. <laughs> So, itong mga extras na to, hindi po yan kasali sa cost ng IVF. So, pagka nag-request tayo ng pre-implantation genetic testing, ibig sabihin, we want to biopsy first yung embryo to find out kung meron siyang um, aneuploidy. Aneuploidy meaning abnormal yung number ng chromosomes ng embryo na yon. Especially if may lahi kayo ng mga congenital uh, defects sa uh, pamilya nyo and you want to minimize the chance na magkaroon ng baby na may uh, ganitong defecto, pwede pong i-request ito, yung PGT, but it is not included in the basic uh, fee of the laboratory. Ang time-lapse naman po ay isang incubator that takes pictures, no? Every five minutes, kinukunan ng picture yung mga embryo na nagde-develop, kaya pwede siyang makita na parang isang movie. So, makikita mo uh, kung paano nag-develop from a single cell to a two cell, four cell, eight cell, and up to a blastocyst. So, and the embryologist is also able to visualize kahit na wala siya dun mismo sa laboratory, pwede niyang ma-check kung kumusta na yung mga embryos na inaalagaan niya sa kanyang incubator. No? Pero these are extras na hindi po kasali sa cost ng isang basic uh, IVF uh, laboratory procedure. So, of course, itong mga extras din ito, hindi sila kasali dahil hindi naman lahat ng pasyente would require immunologic therapy. So, sometimes, pagka ang couple already has history of unexplained infertility, so nakailang embryo transfer na at hindi pa rin nabubuntis despite the fact na good quality yung mga embryos at wala nang nakikitang ibang problema sa kanilang dalawa uh, o kaya meron na silang previous history of recurrent miscarriage, ito yung mga couples na who would benefit from immunotherapy. But we have to refer you to an immunologist. Yung iba namang pasyente would require uh, laparoscopy like those patients who have um, hydrosalphings, ibig sabihin na mamaga yung isang fallopian tube and we're, um, we don't want to do the embryo transfer 
na namamaga siya dahil yung fluid content ng fallopian tube na to is toxic to the embryo. So, wala siyang linalabasan dun sa dulo, kaya bumabalik-balik siya. So, nagbabackflow siya into the cavity of the uterus and that could be the cause of failure of implantation. So, we need to do a laparoscopy first to cut. No? Kailangan i-cut yung connection ng fallopian tube na yon dun sa uterus mismo. Another procedure na pwedeng i-advise um, ng inyong doctor is yung hysteroscopy. Ibig sabihin, this is a camera that is placed inside the vagina through the cervix and into the uterus. So, yung laparoscopy kanina, ang camera linalagay sa pusod para makita yung surface ng matres, surface ng ovaries, and the fallopian tube. Whereas, ang hysteroscopy naman is a camera but you place it inside the cavity of the uterus para makita kung merong deprensya like there's a polyp or a submucous myoma or sometimes merong septum or may hati no? ang matres. So, yan ang ginagamit natin para pagtanggal dun sa septum as well as uh, polyp or submucous myoma. And then lastly, another extra na pwedeng indicated sa inyo is kung si husband has azospermia, meaning there is no sperm in the semen. Zero sperm. So, merong similia na lumalabas pero wala pa lang sperm na kasama. So, ang uh, ginagawa para dito is what we call surgical sperm retrieval. So, hindi po ako ang gagawa nito. Hindi yung ob ne, no? Hindi yung... Um, reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist. Dapat ang gagawa nito ay isang certified na andrologist. Ang andrologist ay isang urologist, uh, general surgeon na nag-training in urology at nag-train din in andrology. So, ang gagawin niya, uh, specialist yan sa male infertility. So, ang ginagawa ng isang andrologist is... Um, uh, different procedures. Depende kung at what level kailangan kunin yung sperm. So, if it's at the level of the testicle, ang tawag dito is tese or testicular sperm extraction. So, it's a small um, incision placed dun sa testicle, testi, te, sa scrotum ni husband. Maliit lang naman po yan. It's still done under anesthesia. So, maliit na buta, uh, hiwa lang para makakuha ng tissue from the testis and then i-examine right away ng ating embryologist para makita kung merong buhay na sperm dun mismo sa testis. This is also useful for those couples who have recurrent miscarriage na na unexplained at mataas yung DNA fragmentation ng sperm ni husband. So, Sabi nila, pagka ang sperm nang galing sa testis, ito ang pinaka-healthy na sperm as compared to yung sperm na galing na sa similia. So, I would like to share with you just two cases of my own na recently done in our center para maintindihan ninyo kung ano yung mga factors that affect the cost of IVF at kung ano ang pwede nating gawin para uh, mabawasan yung uh, yung gastos. So, this is the case of MN. She is 31 years old, G0. Ibig sabihin, never pa siyang nabuntis. At 8 years na silang mag-asawa ni husband. At uh, she was previously diagnosed to have endometriosis. So, walang problema si husband. Tapos, si MN naman is um, okay naman ang kanyang AMH. Ibig sabihin, meron pa siyang uh, magandang number of eggs in her ovaries kasi yung AMH niya is still more than 2. So, nasa 2.53. Yung BMI niya is 20, body mass index. Ibig sabihin, katamtaman lang. Ang kanyang pangangatawan, hindi siya overweight or obese. Kaso, uh, she has severe pelvic endometriosis tapos may cyst pa siya dun sa kanyang right uh, ovary, uh, and although okay yung kanyang right fallopian tube, black naman yung kanyang left fallopian tube. So, I was actually just planning to do uh, laparoscopy on her kasi nagsabi sila, sila na hindi pa nila kaya yung gastos ng IVF, kaya ooperahan ko lang sana siya. 
Uh, that's why I was giving her GNRH therapy as a preparation for her surgery. Ang GNRH, injection niya na once a month for 6 months para hindi mo na siya magregla ng matagal. Kasi nga, ang babaeng may endometriosis, basta regla ng regla, uh, lumalaki yung cis niya. No? So, we did conventional IVF. So, nagsabi sila na dahil sa quarantine, Dahil ang business nila is a small canteen sa kanilang uh, subdivision, nakaipon sila bigla during the quarantine period kasi dumami yung mga customers nila dahil nga sa lockdown. So, uh, natuwa naman ako at they decided to have IVF instead of laparoscopy kasi sa laparoscopy, of course, hindi ka pa sigurado kung mabubuntis siya especially because barado nga yung isa niyang fallopian tube. So, we did not we did not proceed with the laparoscopy anymore. So, nakatap, nakatipid din sila ng mga around 200,000 doon from the surgery. So, we did the conventional IVF and we were able to harvest uh, 10 eggs uh, so, out of the 10 eggs, anim doon ang nag-fertilize. So, as I mentioned earlier, sakto, no? 6 out of 10 ang nag-fertilize. And yung tatlo dito, finrease na namin agad on day 3. Kasi nga, baka walang umabot hanggang day 5. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, 3 times 8-1, uh, tatlong 8-cell embryo, na grade 1. Ibig sabihin, magandang maganda ang quality ng mga embryos na yon. Kaya yung kalahate, the other 6, hinayaan namin na mag-grow until blastocysts. So, sad to say, yung isang, uh, yung isang embryo, hindi siya nag-proceed to blastocysts, but they had two beautiful blastocysts on day 5. At tin-transfer na namin agad yon during the fresh cycle. And as you can see here, yung beta HCG result niya on the fresh cycle is 600 plus. Meaning, nabuntis siya during the fresh cycle. So ngayon, gusto nating malaman kung magkano ang nagastos nila na dere-derecho from the stimulation to the harvest and to the embryo transfer. So ito ang total cost, 355,700 pesos. So, not so bad, di ba? Kasi considering na a long time ago, siguro mga 20 years ago, uh, ang usual na gasto sa, sa isang cycle ng IVF is million or at least half a million pesos. Especially if you have to go abroad, na lilipad pa kayong mag-asawa, papuntang Taiwan, Thailand, or Singapore, or Hong Kong, at uh, kailan pa kayong uh, maghanap uh, ng accommodation dun sa bansa na yon at wala kayong kakilala at uh, kung hindi naging successful uh, yung procedure uh, kailan nyo pang bumalik ulit uh, aside from gumagastos kayo ng malaki hindi rin kayo nakakapagtrabaho at uh, you have to uh, go on leave for at least mga 2 or 3 months when you are undergoing an IVF cycle so, ngayon, dahil meron ng mga IVF centers sa Pilipinas, hindi na umaabot ng mga 500,000 or even 400. Pero, depende pa rin sa kaso nyo yan. For this patient kasi, bata pa siya uh, at hindi siya overweight, tapos marami pa siyang itlog, that's why we didn't have to give her a very high dose of uh, medication. Although, she has pelvic endometriosis, so I'm sure I also gave her uh, medyo mataas na dose, but hindi sobrang taas. So, this second case naman is the case of CM, a 30-year-old G0, wala pa ring baby, with 4 years infertility due to male factor. So, ibig sabihin, wala talagang problema kay misis. Uh, yung sperm lang ang napakababa ng count as well as yung motility. So, ang tawag doon is severe oligo astenospermia, no? Um, so, pero hindi ko na ginawa yung AMH dahil 4,000 pesos din yan at uh, tinipid na namin dahil obviously by ultrasound, marami naman siyang maliliit na follicles in both her ovaries. So, her antral follicle count is more than 5. Yun nga lang, medyo she's on the heavy side kaya ang BMI niya is 32 so I'm sure I also gave her a slightly higher dose of medication. So we did the conventional IVF with freeze-all protocol. Kasi as you notice, nag-harvest po tayo, quarantine period na. 
March 24. So I was the one who advised them na maybe it's not safe to proceed with the embryo transfer kaya i-freeze na lang muna natin lahat dahil at that time hindi pa po natin alam kung anong effect ng coronavirus sa isang buntis as well as sa isang unborn uh, fetus. No? But we were able to harvest 15 eggs, 2 became blastocysts, and 3 were 8 cell uh, grade 1 uh, embryos. All of them were frozen. But then, nainip tayo dahil may na at hindi pa rin natatapos ang pandemya. So, we decided that we're going to do a frozen embryo transfer on day 5. So, ginamit muna natin yung mga blastocysts nila in a natural cycle. Ibig sabihin, uh, nang itlog siya ng isang itlog at after pumutok yung itlog na yun, um, five days later, we did the embryo transfer. But unfortunately, hindi sila nabuntis dito sa first embryo transfer. But fortunately, meron pa silang uh, day 3 embryos. That's why nag-rest lang muna ng Jul uh, June. And then by July, they were able to do another frozen embryo transfer no? during day 3 in an artificial cycle. So, ang artificial cycle, ibig sabihin, wala ng itlog. We just gave her medication para kumapal yung lining ng matres in the form of uh, oral estrogen and then we supplied with uh, progesterone and then three days later we did the transfer and um, uh, thankfully noong July 17 after the embryo transfer ayon nag positive na siya yung beta HCG niya is 166 so ngayon gusto nating malaman kung magkano ginasto sila during the ovum pickup and then during the first transfer and the second transfer during the ovum pickup, it amounted to 283,400. So, lahat-lahat na po to, no? Hanggang dun sa time na na-harvest yung egg, including the medication, bayad sa doktor, bayad sa uh, PF ng anesthesiologist, uh, yung anesthesia, as well as yung freezing fee na for those embryos for one year. So, nung hindi siya nabuntis, ang ginastos niya for the second uh, frozen embryo transfer is like this. 66,000 na lang. So, napakalayo na from the original na ginastos nila from the ovum pickup. Pero hindi nga siya nabuntis dito. So, they had another FET. Medyo mas mataas ng konti kasi binago natin kung ano man yung nakita natin na mali during the first uh, fresh uh, frozen embryo transfer pero mababang mababa pa rin compared to kung uulit na naman siya ng another harvest. So in summary, uh, there are many many factors that affect the cost of IVF. Ang pinaka-importante po dito is yung edad ng babae, no? Dahil this is something na hindi natin mamomodify. Um, so, yung timbang, of course, pwede kayong magpapayat muna if uh, there's still time na mag-lose ng weight, uh, mag-reduce, mag mag-diet at exercise para pwedeng babaan ng konti yung dosage ng medication. So, meron ding mga injectables na medyo mas mura kesa doon sa usually ginagawa natin just because they are made differently, pero it doesn't mean naman na it's less effective. So, basta magsabi kayo sa doktor ninyo, and we can find a way to tailor fit the management to your particular uh, case. As I mentioned earlier, meron tayong iba-ibang mga uh, recipe or protocol na ginagamit uh, for bawat, uh, bawat isang pasyente. With the goal of making IVF more affordable, uh, and without compromising the chances of a successful pregnancy. No? So, kasi baka habang nag-iipon kayo, hindi ninyo alam na bumababa na pala yung uh, chances na mabubuntis ka dahil tumatanda si misis, it might be better just to do immediate IVF rather than to delay it for one year or two years. Sa experience ko naman po, Nakikita ko na yung mga couples na ina-advise kung magpa-IVF, like for example, last year, usually after a few months or this year, bumalik na sila dahil nakaipo na sila. So as long as you or both of you are working, I'm sure no, it's uh, not impossible para ma-achieve natin yung goal na ma-IVF ka na habang meron pa kayong uh, good quality na uh, eggs as well as uh, sperm. 
So, if uh, I may say so, yung cost po ng IVF sa Pilipinas actually did not increase since the early 2000s. No? So, nung nag-umpisa ako mag-IVF in the year 2004, uh, ganun na ang presyo ng mga laboratory fee and in fact, yung mga medication, mas lalo pa ngang naging mas mura ngayon kasi uh, mas may competition na. Marami ng iba-ibang companies who uh, manufacture and distribute yung mga injectable medications. And of course, because there are more IVF centers in the country, there is friendly competition. So, most of us, wala talagang balak na magtaas ng presyo. No? So, alam natin, merong mga IVF centers sa Manila, meron na rin sa Cebu, sa Davao, at ngayon, meron na rin sa Central Luzon, no? here in Angeles City. So, it's still cheaper to have your IVF done here in the Philippines rather than going abroad. And uh, maybe you might want to think of doing it earlier or having an immediate IVF rather than delaying it for another year or two because it will only increase the cost dahil mag increase yung dosage ng medication and may potential then na mag-decrease yung success rate. And with that, I would like to thank all of you for your interest no? um, sa ating uh, first uh, webinar. So, ang balak po natin is to come out with one uh, webinar like this that will tackle the different myths and misconceptions at least once a month. So, salamat po dahil na-encourage ako sa interest ninyo dito sa webinar na ito. So, I'm just not sure. Marami pong uh, mga message dito. Pero lahat po kayo ay nagigreet lang. Wow. So, salamat sa inyo. Pero parang walang nagtanong. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Ayun. So, ang daming nagreet. Ang daming nagreet sa inyo. Salamat uh, sa inyong attention. And uh, dahil uh, isang oras na, saktong one hour, um, I would just like to invite you sa ating next na webinar. Ang magiging topic nun is about uh, whether IVF produces high-risk pregnancies. No? So because usually yan ang misconception natin na pagka na IVF ka, sigurado masisis ka dahil high risk ang pregnancy mo. No? Totoo kaya ito or hindi? So ito yung i-discuss natin uh, sa ating next na uh, episode ng myths and misconceptions about IVF. And with that, I would like to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, stay tuned and uh, stay safe, everyone. How do you turn this off? <laughs> Wait. Bye bye. <laughs>